With serverless, you pay exactly for what you're using, you don't waste your time managing infrastructure, and you can focus on the thing that you like most, building software. So where's the catch? Let's find out. The first defining feature of serverless is auto-scaling. Imagine that you're running a bakery business and you have a website where your customers can place their orders. You have a pretty steady number of customers, so your self-hosted server can easily handle the demand. But one day, a very famous influencer walks into your bakery, takes a couple of pictures of your delicious pastries and shares these pictures on their social media account. Suddenly, the post goes viral and millions of people try to log into your website to order delicious pastries for, from, from your bakery. But what happens is that your website goes down because it can't handle the demand. You weren't quick enough to provision new servers and suddenly your business suffers. This is where auto-scaling comes into play. When you deploy your application to a serverless platform, the platform will scale automatically for you so that you don't have to suffer because you're suddenly more famous. The second advantage of serverless over traditional architectures is the better developer productivity. Provisioning servers is not the only chore that you have when you manage your own infrastructure. You have to set up SSL and TLS certificates, update them yearly, set up logging, update your servers to apply security patches, and so on. The cool part is that serverless platforms take away all of that job and they do it themselves, so that you can focus on the thing that you like most and that your customers pay for, building software. Finally, when you're using serverless, you pay exactly for the resources that you use. Naturally, this is different depending on the software that you use. For example, on a compute platform such as Quadron, you pay for the RAM and CPU that your application consumes while handling requests. While when using a serverless database, such as MongoDB Atlas, you pay for the database operations that you execute and the storage that your data takes. As a developer, you want to quickly deliver great cloud applications like web apps, mobile apps, APIs, background jobs, and whatnot. Choosing a cloud solution comes with its own trade-offs. One, managing your own servers, which means you're provisioning, configuring, and scaling your own servers and you may also run the risk of over-provisioning resources than what you actually need or use. And two, choosing a traditional serverless solution means you may limit the possibilities of languages and libraries that you may want to use. And it may also make the whole process harder by making it difficult to move application between environments by requiring code changes. So what if I say that you can enjoy the best of both worlds? Enter Cloudrun, providing serverless agility to your containerized apps. Cloudrun lets you deploy any stateless container, lets you choose your favorite programming language, framework, or binary library that works for you. All you have to do is specify your programming language, list the dependencies, and mention the start script in your Docker file, and package this all in a container. And voila, in just one command, your app is good to go and is running in the cloud. Cloudrun provisions and manages the servers for you. Cloudrun scales automatically up and down, even down to $0. You only pay for the resources your app uses. And Cloudrun is built on Knative, which makes it easy for you to use it with your own Kubernetes engine cluster. By default, Cloudrun can scale your service up to a thousand containers. This means that your web app can start handling billions of requests. This is all amazing, well, until your database goes down. And the reason for that is that traditional databases are built in the 60s and 70s, and they don't take the cloud into account and then don't scale automatically. This is why MongoDB Atlas, the developer data platform by MongoDB, introduced serverless instances. If you're already using Google Cloud, you can subscribe to MongoDB Atlas from the cloud marketplace. Follow the links in the description to get to the subscription page. You can create a serverless database right from the Atlas user interface. When you go to this configuration page, you have to select serverless. The only configuration you need to select is your cloud provider, the region you want to host your database at, the backup that you want. I'm just going to select the basic backup for this demo and the name of the instance. When the deployment is ready, you get a connection string and that's all you need to connect you have a serverless database. 
With MongoDB Atlas serverless instances, you get all the benefits of serverless. A cost model that charges you only for the operations that you execute and the storage your data takes, auto-scaling benefits, and a simple development experience. To make our application truly serverless, we'll combine MongoDB Atlas and CloudRun. MeanStack, MongoDB, which is responsible for data storage, ExpressJS, a Node.js web application framework for building APIs, Angular, a client-side JavaScript platform, Node.js, a server-side JavaScript runtime environment. So let's just take a look at the traditional architecture where we have the client layer, which is the Angular application, using REST APIs to send requests and receive responses from the server-side application, which is on Express and Node, connecting to the database. And this is your serverless mean stack architecture. As you can see, the client and the server applications are in two different containers deployed in CloudRun. And uh, they're using a MongoDB Node.js driver to connect to the MongoDB Atlas serverless instance. For our demo, we will deploy an employee management system to CloudRun. So first, let's go ahead and open the CloudShell editor. As you can see, the CloudShell editor looks suspiciously like Visual Studio Code. That's because both projects use the same open source components, such as the Modoc editor and the language server protocol. But let's ignore the ID for now and open a terminal to clone our project. Let's take a look at what's inside the project. So our Angular application lives in the client directory and the REST API lives in the server directory. Let's start with the server because the deployment configuration is simple here. We have a single Docker file, which is the configuration file for our Docker container. So first we said that we want to use Node 17 in our uh, container. Then we set up the working directory for the container. Then we copy over the package.json and run npm install. Afterwards, we copy the whole project with the install dependencies and build it with the npm run build command. Finally, we start the web service using the node command. And that's all we have here. Now let's head over to the client application. Uh, this one is just a little bit more complicated because we are using Nginx to start a web server. And you can also find this file in the description below, along with the whole project, of course. The only notable thing here is that we're listening on port 8080 and we have a root file, which is index.html that we are going to grab from our uh, built Angular application. So how do we build the application? We are using Docker again, and our configuration looks uh, quite similar to the uh, server configuration. Again, we set up node 17 uh, in our container. We select the working directory. We copy the dependencies packages. Then we install the dependencies themselves and we copy the whole directory. Then we build the Angular application for production. Then we configure the Nginx web server. And finally, we start the Nginx server. All right, let's deploy our application. To deploy from the CloudShell editor, we have to navigate over here and then click on this super small icon that says deploy to CloudRun. And now I'm going to minimize that so we can focus on the configuration. First, I will deploy the REST API. So we're creating a new service. We are going to call that employees REST API. We will select a region that is close to our database. I'm going to expand the advanced settings here and configure the port. I have specified the same port number in the application, so this should be specified here as well. And then I also have to set up the connection string for my database. As you can see, you can also use the secret manager and it's actually recommended, but for the purpose of the demo, we're just gonna hard code the environment variable here. We will use a cloud build. And finally, we have to specify that we're using Docker and we have to select our Docker file. I'm going to hit deploy and take a look at the build that is happening here in the logs. And we have our deployed service. Let's see if it's working. Even though we don't have any data in our database, we can still see if it returns an empty array for our employees. And yeah, we have exactly that, an empty array, which is what we expect. 
All right, I'm going to use the URL in the client application because our client application connects to our API. So let's replace our URL with the actual URL that we are using. And then we can go and deploy our Angular application. We will select a new service because we want two services for our two apps. Well, we'll call that employees web application. I will select the same region to ensure low latency. Then I'm going to select cloud build again, Docker in the builder settings. And this time I'm going to select the Docker file that lives in the client directory. Deploying the Angular application things takes a bit longer because the dependencies are, well, a little bit more than the dependencies that we have in our server application. When the deployment is finished, we are going to receive a new URL again, and let's go ahead and open that URL. As you can see, we have an empty list with employees. That's because we don't have anything in our database yet. So let's go ahead and add myself over here. And I'm glad that this application works because it means that we are actually connected to our database. And here we are, we have our fully serverless application deployed to Cloud Run using a serverless instance in MongoDB Atlas as well. You can also deploy your Angular application using Firebase, which is going to allow you to serve your content through CDN. To find out how, check out the description below. Everything that you saw in the Cloud Run deployment console user interface that in Mira's demo can also be done using a single line command shell command, as you can see, gcloud run deploy, the name of your application, and then the name of your image, and then platform managed to specify that you're requesting a fully managed environment and provide your region, specify your authentication details, and then update environment variables, which will expect the MongoDB connection string to be passed on to the environment variable DB host. To get started with CloudRun and MongoDB Atlas, please check out the links below. And should you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. And if you like this video as much as we enjoyed recording it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more developer content.